Hey, Vaughn here. All right, we got Nature's Com. I, what? Comedium? I believe. I'm gonna ask that names. But, person runs this channel did comment on, I think, one of the videos I reacted to it. Look, don't worry, bro. It's okay is that it went under your radar for a fat minute. You know what I mean? We a small channel. Well, actually, they say they are small channels when they got like 10K. I'm a non-existent channel. <laughs> but nah, um, it's fine that you spoiled the movie, bro. You know, um, I still haven't seen it, which is crazy. Wait, where can you watch Jurassic Park? But they say it's on Amazon. Bro, I can get, I can watch it. Hold on. I'm about to watch that shit today, actually. But with that being said, we are going to watch, I think, the most recent one. How accurate, how scientifically accurate is Jurassic World's Diplosaurus? I said that right. There's no way I didn't say that right. Diplosaurus. So with that being said, if you're new, like, comment, subscribe. And if you're not new, you just keep coming back. Subscribe, what are you doing? And let's see how accurate it is, bro. You know, in the quest of uh, trying to figure out how accurate the dinosaurs really are, we learned that Hollywood just like to add some spice to it, bro. It's not accurate at all. Hollywood just adds some little, you know what I mean, to make it a little bit uh, movie ready. This video and others like it are made possible by the generous support of my patrons on Patreon. Shout out to y'all. The early Jurassic was when dinosaurs really began to make their mark on the planet. After the end Triassic extinction event, all the previous groups of dominant reptiles died out, giving room for dinosaurs to occupy new niches and dominate the world. And around 193 million years ago in North America, one of the first large predatory dinosaur emerged, the iconic double-crested Dilophosaurus. <laughs> I did not say that name right at all. Dilophosaurus? I call it Diplosaurus. Dip. Where did I get the dip from, actually? Once I look at the name, where did I get the dip from? Diplosaurus. Dilophosaurus. That sounds... That makes a lot more sense. Where did I get the D-I-P instead of the D-I-L-O-P? Like, where... I went to public school. You gotta understand. Thanks to its appearance in Jurassic Park and its reappearance in Jurassic World Dominion, Dilophosaurus has become a very popular and well-known theropod dinosaur around the world. But what was shown in the movies is extremely far from what the animal was like in reality. So in this video, we will be taking a look at what Dilophosaurus was actually like and compare it to the Jurassic World's rendition. We will start by taking a look at what we know about Dilophosaurus according to science, and then we will take a look at the Jurassic World version to see how scientifically accurate it is. Enjoy! Fossils of Dilophosaurus were discovered in northern Arizona. They were first found in 1940 <coughs> by a member of the Navajo Nation, Jesse Williams. Williams would show these bones to paleontologists Sam Wells and Wyan Langston Jr who then excavated the remains in 1942. It was originally thought to have been a Megalosaurus until the famous tall crested specimens were discovered. The animal was named Dilophosaurus, meaning two crested lizard. Dilophosaurus was the oldest large predatory dinosaur of North America ever discovered. However, this animal was never thoroughly described until as recently as 2020. Paleontologists Adam D. Marsh and Timothy B. Rowe comprehensively redescribed Dilophosaurus based on every bone from every known specimen. Their results have finally helped shed light on Dilophosaurus as an animal after nearly 80 years since its discovery. Originally, Dilophosaurus was thought to have been an intermediate between the early Triassic Coelophysoids and the late Jurassic Ceratosaurus. Marsh and Rowe's reanalysis showed that Dilophosaurus was not related to Ceratosaurus at all. Instead, they belonged to a group of early non avarestron theropods along with the South American Zupaisaurus and Antarctican Cryolophosaurus. This new analysis showed that Dilophosaurus was part of the unique growth and diversification of theropods during the early Jurassic. Dilophosaurus was the largest North American predator at the time. The largest known specimen weighed about 400 kilograms, or 880 pounds, 
and measured approximately 7 meters or 23 feet in length. The skull alone was almost 29 centimeters long, making it larger than any land predator alive today. Before the redescription, Dilophosaurus was thought to have had a fragile skull and weak bite. Marsh collaborated with paleo artist Brian Eng to create a rigorous skull reconstruction, and the results show that these original hypotheses weren't accurate. We now know that Dilophosaurus had powerful jaw muscles and used its 68 serrated teeth to shear through flesh and bone. The most famous feature of Dilophosaurus are its two bony crests attached to the top of its head. These crests not, that's the only, that, that stands upwards out. expanded nasal and lacrimal bones. Unfortunately, Why is it only the base room, of the crest is known according to the best preserved specimens. Thanks to the 2020 reanalysis, we now have a better understanding of what these crests may have been used for. The crests were originally thought to have been thin plates of bone, but we now know that the insides of the crest were actually hollow. The crests were reinforced with a honeycomb-like structure of air pockets to strengthen and protect it. Many modern birds like hornbills, cassowaries, and helmeted guinea fowl also have air-filled bony crests connected to their skulls. These structures are covered in keratin, the same material that forms bird beaks, rhino horns, and your fingernails. Keratin covering can also increase the size of the crest beyond the bones, and they can be grown in all colors. This could mean that for Dilophosaurus, I was thinking, I'm like, bro, sometimes. Larger than what the bones suggest. This also oh, suggests that these crests may have been used for display to attract mates. Individuals with the larger and more impressive crest were more likely to mate and have some dirty ass them. fingernails, the bro. The hollow spaces within the crest joined up with the animal's nasal passages. Perhaps they may have even been attached to inflatable air sacs for display, similar to what we see in modern day frigate birds. Dilophosaurus had short, powerful arms with strong muscle attachment points. The animals had very strong pectoral and arm muscles, and the arms had a wide range of mobility. The holotype shows multiple wounds, further suggesting that these strong, flexible arms were used a lot in life. Their hands had four fingers, three of which were equipped with curved, sharp claws. The first finger was shorter but stronger and was equipped with a large claw. The next two fingers were longer and more slender with smaller claws. The fourth finger was vestigial and lacked a claw altogether. This suggests that these arms were used to help further incapacitate prey or assist in combat. Dilophosaurus is thought to have been a rather fast and agile animal. Hollow air sacs within the bones allowed for the animal to intake more oxygen via unidirectional airflow through its lungs. Dilophosaurus is estimated to have reached top speeds of up to 46 kilometers per hour, making it about Damn. as fast as an emu. All of these adaptations point to Dilophosaurus being a skilled predator. Scientists He's just chilling with a head in his mouth, like, yeah. Dilophosaurus was either a scavenger or a fish eater. This was because the skull was originally reconstructed as being more fragile. The fish eating hypothesis specifically came about due to the ends of the jaws forming a rosé of interlocking teeth. We now know that the skull of Dilophosaurus was much more robust, and the notch of the upper jaw was a tad exaggerated. That's crazy how they just be analyzing the skull and see what type of bite marks were found food on the ate. bones of Sarasaurus, a sauropodomorph that lived in the Cayenta Formation. This supports Dilophosaurus being an apex predator of its time, since no other known theropods from the region were large enough to create these bite marks. In addition, there are several specimens of Dilophosaurus that show healed injuries and bite marks. This suggests that these animals lived a violent lifestyle and even engaged in intraspecies combat. They may have also engaged in cannibalism, just as some modern birds do today. As of now, it is not conclusively known if Dilophosaurus was feathered or scaly. Since recent discoveries suggest that filamentous covering may have been a more ancestral trait to dinosaurs, it's entirely possible that Dilophosaurus may have been feathered. The closest line of evidence we have is a resting trace from Massachusetts of a large early Jurassic theropod. The animal was resting on both of its feet, as well as a tip bone, and the resting trace showed striation marks. These marks have been interpreted to have been left by feathers, but they may have also been caused by scale drag marks. As of now, both interpretations of Dilophosaurus are plausible, and only more discoveries will help us understand this animal's appearance.
The Kayenta Formation that Dilophosaurus came from was a challenging place to live during the early Jurassic. The hey, region had bite it in a butt. waterways that were lined with vegetation and surrounded by sand. This area was home to an assortment of early dinosaur species and other unique animals. Scutellosaurus was a small herbivorous dinosaur that weighed 3 kilograms and can grow up to 1.3 meters long. The genus name means little shielded lizard, and it gets its name from the many osteoderms that line its body from neck to tail. Scutellosaurus was one of the first thyreophoran dinosaurs, the group of dinosaurs that include animals like Stegosaurus and Ankylosaurus. To Dilophosaurus, this small dinosaur would have been nothing more than a mere snack. But snacks are always worth eating. For a more complete meal, Dilophosaurus would have turned towards the larger dinosaurs. Cerasaurus was a genus of basal sauropodomorph and is one of the few discovered in North America. Unlike their future gigantic cousins, Cerasaurus walked bipedally. They would have used their elongated necks and 80 serrated teeth to scrape leaves off of the trees. Living amongst these dinosaurs were the early stem mammals and their relatives. Cayentotherium belonged to a group of mammal-like animals known as tritylodonts. It was well over a meter long and had a robust, stocky build. Some researchers believe that they may have been semi-aquatic, being one of the earliest examples of semi-aquatic Look, bro, being an animal that could just chill down there? Oh, P, bro. Unless it's like, you know, another predator that could chill down there with you, bro. ...and stem mammals. The tritylodons would end up going extinct in the early Cretaceous, while true mammals would persist... I was thinking, I'm like, bro, if I'm an animal Antithera full of dinosaurs... Is one of the many examples of early Jurassic diversification for other animal groups... I, I want to be able to dig dinosaurs. underground. I want to be able to do that. ...was indeed an incredible and iconic dinosaur of the early Jurassic. While we now know more about this incredible animal, there is still so much to learn. Only more discoveries will help us uncover the mysteries behind the first macro-predatory dinosaur of North America. So now that we've gone over what Dilophosaurus was really like as an animal, All right, now let's, let's compare it to the Jurassic yeah, World version. I see. For oh, starters, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Which one is the, the, the one on the left? Jurassic Park and Jurassic World is actually one of the few animals to be downsized. The movie oh. version is almost hey, one did. third downsized the size it. of the real animal. In comparison to the films, I made it look like a raptor. Featured in the original Jurassic Park novel is much larger and closer to the real animal size. Moving on, let's take a look at the skull shape. The movie Dilophosaurus does possess the two crests on its heads, but these are depicted as much thinner and blade-like. This is the only similarity the skull shape has. Let's be honest here. Let's go back. Hold on. Let's go. Hold on. Let's go back. Moving on, let's take. You know, I know, like they like to ask them, like you know, movie ready, make it look cooler. But like, bro, the 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 original one looked way cooler, bro. What the heck? is much larger oh, yes. than the skull shape has to the real animal. The crest features a spur at the back unrelated to the lacrimal spur we see in current Dilophosaurus. The skull shape of the movie Dilophosaurus is much more boxy and stout compared to the real animal. The movie version also lacks the notch in the upper jaw. Now part of the reason why the skull shape for the Jurassic World Dilophosaurus is inaccurate is because the original design wasn't actually oh, based shit. on Dilophosaurus oh, skull oh. material at all. Instead, it was based on the skull of another dinosaur, Cenosaurus. This Chinese theropod was once thought to have been another species of Dilophosaurus, but that has since been long debunked. Moving on, the wrists of the movie version are pronated facing downwards, which is incorrect. In reality, theropod wrists pointed towards each other. Yeah, they nerfed the hell out of this, man. The movie Dilophosaurus also has three fingers instead of four. These fingers also appear to be equally sized, which is incorrect. And finally, the most notorious and deliberate... Why? Well, I kind of like the left side a little more. Dilophosaurus ...was the presence of its frills and use of venom. While the frill is inspired by the modern-day Australian frilled lizard, it doesn't quite work the same. Australian frilled lizards have six bony ribs at the hyoid apparatus, located at the bottom of their throat. They use their throat muscles to help open the frill. They also have two pieces of cartilage to support the top of the frill and keep it extended. Unlike in frilled lizards, the movie Dilophosaurus can open and close its mouth while keeping its frill extended. The ribs of the frill are shown to be on the side of the movie Dilophosaurus's neck. These structures did not exist in the real animal, 
and were given to make the movie animal a bit more scary and exciting looking. The movie Dilophosaurus also spits out a thick, gooey load of viscous venom onto its targets. The Dilophosaurus in the novel lacks the frill but does spit venom as well. When Dilophosaurus was believed to have had a fragile bite, some scientists proposed that maybe it used venom to subdue its prey. Of course, there is no evidence to suggest or support Dilophosaurus using venom. And besides, the real animal most definitely didn't need venom in the first place. It was a more than capable killer. So now that we have gone over the differences, let's speculate what went into the DNA of this creature to make it look the way it did. Now based on the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World lore, all of the clones are created by extracting fragmentary DNA from amber and fossils, and then using DNA from different modern day animals to fill in the gaps. For starters, fragmentary Dilophosaurus DNA was used initially. The ones shown in Dominion are implied to be original InGen clones from Isla Sorna, so of course frog DNA was used here. Crocodilian DNA may have also been used as well. For the characteristic frill, we will assume that the DNA from frilled lizards was used. And finally, for the venom, we'll assume that spitting cobra and Komodo dragon DNA was used. The venom of Komodo dragons is thick and viscous, similar to the movie Dilophosaurus. So there we have it, our speculative genetic makeup of the Jurassic World Dilophosaurus. Again, none of this is officially canon to the franchise, rather this was done as a fun way to further differentiate between the fantasy of Jurassic World and the reality of the fossil record. Jurassic World is the most popular IP in modern media featuring dinosaurs. Mm. Dilophosaurus has been a fan favorite since its first appearance in Jurassic Park. While the film chose to keep the outdated design, it at least helped bring back global attention to this dinosaur. The filmmakers originally gave it a frill to make the animal more iconic, but I hope this video helped show that the real animal was already majestic, awe-inspiring, and iconic enough without the inclusion yeah. of fabricated frills or venom. Before I conclude this video, I want to give a huge thank you to Brian Ng for helping with the skull reconstruction and going over the script with me. Aang helped with the redescription of Dilophosaurus, so I'm very honored and grateful for his support. Brian Aang has new videos coming to his YouTube channel, so be sure to subscribe to his channel for more of his incredible artwork and content. Bro, that's crazy. Oh, that's it? Hi, right, well, bro, I mean, um... Did they really need to change much on that thing? No, not, not really. Like, it already looked good. I mean, the venom and then all that kind of made it more badass but they really could have kept it the same honestly but good video very informative um dilosaurus instead of diplosaurus that's it's the most accurate version and it's time for me to go watch the movie finally so i won't get spoiled see you on the next one peace